Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Sanjay Parashar and today we are going to talk about some basic concepts of Mule application development and it is very important for us to know these basic concepts because in our subsequent tutorials we will be using these events, event processors, these activities frequently in order to develop a Mule application. So it's very important that we at least understand what is doing what as part of this session number three. So first of all, to understand how the data flows within Mule application, we must understand how Mule event and how Mule message is architectured. So as you can see here, a Mule message contains attributes and payload, like I explained in my previous tutorial. In attributes, we have information about query parameters, in payload we have the entire payload that we get from the end user we can create variables and as a whole as combined as a combination of mule message and variables we create a mule event in our previous tutorial we created a mule event of http request and we used a set payload event processor you can say or you can say an activity or a processor that we used set payload to replace the payload and send it back to the user so now let's do some demo to understand what exactly we are talking about uh, related to the mule message and we'll also learn some basic event processors or activities that we will be using frequently in our subsequent tutorial so it's best we know the basics now so that the things will be easier for us in the future tutorials so this was the demo project that we created in our previous tutorial, the session number two, where we created this main flow. Under this main flow, we have an HTTP listener, which we were calling through Postman and the resource path is hello. And here in advance, we gave the method name get. So let's remove this and let's keep this HTTP listener as get as well as for post. And here we set a payload where we got the query parameter value complete name that the user gave us and we concatenated that with a string hello. So now there is one very important uh, event processor called logger which comes really handy whenever we are trying to debug our code or whenever we want to print something in console to understand where our compiler is at the moment or where it has reached. It's something similar to system.out.println in Java and anyone who has been working uh, as a Java developer they can never underestimate the power of println command. So here as a substitute of that we have this logger which is a part of core module module. This logger basically prints whatever we give here as a message it will print to the console whenever we will be testing this. So let's let's test this how this logger works. So without switching it to the expression mode, let's just say logger test. I'm saving it and we have this connection handy in Postman where we are giving um, complete name as Sanjay Parashar and it was returning hello Sanjay Parashar. Let's test it. We got the uh, output and in the console logger test should be printed here we go the logger test is printed now by using this mule expressions or data weave expressions we can change we can also put payload here or we can get any variable value here we can also get attribute value here so at the moment in the in the logger we have put it as payload so in the set payload let me just remove this set payload at the moment and let's just focus on the logger only here we have put as payload we want to print the payload and as we have removed this uh, http get now it can work as get as well as post so now let's 
switch this to post remove this query parameter and under the body section let's give some json and let's test it so it is 200 and as we have logged or we have printed payload in console so as you can see the same is printed here now if we want to traverse this data With this dot operator, we can give name, whatever we got in payload as a key. It is case sensitive, so it has to be exactly the same. We can give it and now the name should be, the value of this key should be there as a logger. So let's see. As you can see now. We have this only the value of that particular key so that's how you traverse through a json payload by using the dot operator here also other than this logger we have certain event processors like set variable where you can create a variable and give a certain value to it for example i give this name as test where one and i give a value test value under the logger if we want to log whatever value that we have set as part of this variable we have this keyword called where's for all the variables with dot operators it will list down all the variables which has been initialized as part of your um, mule application you select this save this and as i told you guys in a previous tutorial whenever you save it your mule runtime is smart enough to automatically restart your application let's test it and here the variable the whatever value that we gave as part of this has been set and in this set payload as previously i have already told we can manipulate the payload and return this payload to the user and as part of a mule message as i was telling you guys in previous tutorial as well we have certain keywords like message we have attributes under the attributes we have these many options the most used option is this query params where you can give a query parameter name that user will be passing as part of the get request and we can also log any variable here so these sort of things we will be doing very frequently in in this entire series so we must know know how it works and whenever we are doing what exactly we are doing you should be able to understand now and data weave is a very vital part of this entire mule application or mule integration technology and we will be having separate sessions on data weave because it's very vast it makes life of a developer very easy a lot of things that can be achieved using data weave that previously with other technologies a developer has to do that using uh, a lot of different uh, functions a lot of different activities and defining the logic itself however in data view we have that as an out of the box solution in built as part of data view however we'll get to that when we will be working on you know complex as examples and for data view itself we will have a different sessions altogether from basic to the uh, complex level of data view however just for your understanding to get the data weave or a transform message 
this is the option transform message which is a part of core module you can drag and drop it here and you can see this is the data we here you have the inputs here you have the outputs and here you will see the data weave 2.0 code whatever you see above this three dashes is called the header and whatever is there beneath this is called the body of data weave this application.java basically tells your output will be of java object or of java type you can change it to json now your output will be of json type however we will dig deeper into this when we will be doing some more POCs on this. I personally thought that it is very important for you guys to understand these basic terminologies for Mule applications so that in subsequent tutorials when we, when we will be doing some complex stuff or when we will be doing a different POCs related to JSON, XML, CSV uh, payloads it will be easy for you guys to follow through it will be easy for you guys to understand and you guys will not be confused so these are some basic concepts yet very important concepts that i highly recommend you guys to be familiar with so this is it guys for today's session and i personally thought in my opinion it is very important for anyone who wants to become a mule application developer they should be aware of these basic concepts only then you will be able to follow through the entire tutorial series that we are going to create for you guys i hope you liked it and thank you so much for your time and take good care of yourselves bye bye